Hi, my name is Jose Rojas. I'm a program manager in Azure Identity. I specifically work in Azure Active Directory B2C. And today I'm going to share with you some information about a recently GA'd uh, portion of our service, which is Azure Active Directory B2C with custom policies. Let's step right in. As a reminder, Azure Active Directory B2C is the access platform the controlled access platform for your customers accessing your own applications. When your customers come to you, they might want to use things like login with Google, login with Facebook. They might want to create an account unique to your particular application. Or sometimes they might even want to use an ID they already have, such as an Azure Active Directory business login or a government ID to log into your applications. Once they have access on the right side of the page, we then refer to accessing applications, accessing your APIs, and providing analytics that are centralized for any number of applications for all your user base. Today, we're especially going to talk about external systems integration because this is part of the superpowers that we recently uh, GA'd in B2C. Just real quick, the total value of B2C is one, secure authentication. Two, the ability to capture any amount of customer information and save it to your directory or other, other sources of data or their destinations for your data. And lastly, Everything is branded to your application or your particular brand. You can choose one per brand, many per brand, it's up to you. So this security and this control comes to you. And we provide this uh, with a specific set of benefits, of particularly to developers. And that's because you might already be aware, every time your code base touches things like security, like authentication, uh, it requires some special review, or should require some special review. And what the value proposition we give developers is to say, look, no matter how your users approach you, which application or which device, we give you one control plane. All those applications depicted in the, in the slide <laughs> in the multicolors come to Azure App Directory B to see one point to access, give access to your users. And you can then develop one experience, one experience per application, or even more than that. And what you get is single sign-on, you get a consistent set of user experiences, and you get to improve them over time as they access different applications. And then even things that are a little tricky or a little messy, things like compliance, things like keeping metrics across applications become much easier when you have that one central point. But with this control plane, also there are also some things you might want to do when you arrive here. So let's take a look at an example, and we're going to do a simple example and a more complicated one. In this chart, we show a user coming to their device log it into your application, but then your application knows that this user wants to sign in. They maybe push the sign in button. When they do that, the application, your application, reaches out to B2C and says, B2C, please perform an authentication using policy XYZ. In this example, B2C picks up the experience and presents to the user an, uh, a self-asserted or a, an interactive experience branded by you that would say, for example, hey, how would you like to log in? Would you like to use Google, Facebook, maybe create a new account? Let's say the user chooses Facebook in this interaction. Well, the next step, B2C reaches out to Facebook directly, makes a connection, the user authenticates, B2C receives the token back, all is good, and says, okay, fine. Third step, let's see if we have this user in the directory. If we do, great, let's authenticate the user. If we don't, maybe this is an opportunity to create a new user. And that's exactly what happens, a new user registration. And the last step in the simple example, we go back to the application, issue a token to the application up top, and the application continues its journey in a secure fashion. Okay, this is basic, and you can achieve this in five minutes or less using Azure Active Directory B2C user flows. Just look that up, user flows. It's the easiest way to configure these journeys, and about 80% of our customers stop there. This is just tremendously useful as is. But today we're gonna talk about some more complicated situations. So what if, you actually want to change those steps or you want to change the order of those steps. This is when user journeys and orchestration steps comes in. Here we deconstruct the policy, or specifically a user journey. And in this example, you see our orchestration step is what we call it. Step one, choose an identity provider. Step two, gather information from the user. Step three, verify some of that information. So far, so good. But what if you want to validate the data? So what if in orchestration step two, the user inputs data and you want to verify whether it already exists, whether it's correct, whether it is susceptible in your existing systems. Or for example, at the end, you want to record the user preferences, not just in Azure Active Directory B2C, but you want to record it in your own database. Or you want to perhaps provision a user in your sales platform for a future follow-up. So let's talk about the data validation specifically. 
This is all part of how B2C does external systems integration. And in all, you, in all cases, your user reaching through any kind of app, number of apps, perform, performs an authentication, and immediately after, now we can do some external systems interaction. And how do we do that? One great way to do it is Azure Functions. And I'm going to show you that today. Azure Functions adds superpowers to your journeys. You can do things like progressive profiles in different systems. You can calculate, uh, for, for example, what's the percentage of a profile that is complete. You can do things like check the data, check a loyalty account, check a player tag, which is um, what I'm going to show you. Uh, and these are all, I call them superpowers, that you can add in B2C. Let's go right to a bit of a demo. So if we switch over and we go to um, the user view in B2C, and let's go ahead and select uh, Azure Active Directory B2C. And within B2C, you can go to user flows to create the, sim the simpler experiences, or you go to the identity experience framework to select uh, other experiences, the ones we're, we're going to talk about. And within here, I've created a number of policies that are available that I've already used, and I want to show you what that looks like. At the same time, within my Azure Active Directory instance, I uh, have a number of services I use for my, my applications, like perhaps you do as well. One of them is Azure Functions. And I've created a function specifically called check player tag. This function is written in C Sharp. And B2C will interact with it as it will interact with any API. And based on the responses from that API, continue the user journey or not. So now that I've shown you a bit of the code, in this particular case, C Sharp, it's a verification. We'll come back to it, but let's see what it looks like. So let's take a look at a website we created. This uh, website is a demo. And within it, we provide you the code, so you can take a good close look at it. But within this experience, we have the opportunity to create uh, a site in, and specifically, I'm going to show you what it looks like. Uh, in this particular experience, there's a user that's signed up into the application using some of the other applications in the family, so the user exists. But it is the first time the user is going to access this particular application. So let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and do a sign-in. Instead of using a social account, this user is just creating a, or used a local account, uh, specifically in your directory. Let's go ahead and do a sign-in. Now this application has seen this user for the very first time. So it's going to first see if you set the terms and conditions of this particular part of the site or this particular application in the family. I'm going to say yes. These preferences, by the way, are stored in a compliance system as well. And I'll continue. My next question, the system realizes that there's data I have not provided in the past that's relevant to this particular application for games. And I'm going to introduce a player tag. Let's say that I choose Artemis as my player tag, a player zone, let's just call it recreation, Player moto, who dares? Uh, let's just say, no, so interested, uh, not want to receive any offers, and I hit create. Well, at this point, for all of you, you can see right here, the system checked whether or not this player tag was taken. This has to be unique throughout the, the system, and it's certainly it is not it is not uh, possible. Let's try a different one. See if that works. Nope, this one's also taken. What is going on? Well, if we go back to the application, to the specifically to the API, we can see that we created an API, and this API has a very limited list of taken, it's just for demo purposes, of uh, player tags that are already taken. Artemis, Slayer123, Parzival, the list could be in the thousands or in the millions. And typically, this interaction would be directly with one of your systems that has that data. But the idea is that B2C, in real time, called out to an API, specifically in Azure Functions, and Azure Function can typically keep up with us in terms of performance uh, across the globe, and is able to complete this function. Let's take a look at what this looks like. And before we do that, let's just complete it. Let's choose something altogether different. Let's see if this is accepted. And I'm going to say Create. And in this case, we completed the login into the application. So that player tag works. But let's talk about how that works. So we took a quick look about the, the API itself. The API is just listening. It's a webhook. Within it, it merely is going to check whether or not a particular player tag is taken. If it is, it's going to respond back to B2C with a full string that's going to have the tag slayer123. It's already in use. Please choose a new one. 
and that was the interaction we saw. Now, what is the B2C half of this equation? Let's look at that. So let's flip over to Visual Studio Code. And uh, within Visual Studio Code, I've downloaded uh, a number of policies. This is the way a policy looks like when you look at it from the custom policy lens. Within that policy, I've done two things. First of all, in this particular part of the flow, I've added a new step. In this flow, this is when the user is logging in for the first time, or logging in period. And I've introduced a new function. It's called the validation technical profile into an Azure function check player tag webhook. Hopefully you can see that. This is the function that's denominated the API function where I just reached into. And it's going to send the data that it just gathered from the user, whatever is appropriate, over to that function, specifically including the player tag. Now what does that look like? The other thing I need to do is define what does this function look like in B2C. So let's scroll up in this particular function. Let's take a look at that. So from here to here, this is the declaration of a claims provider, and specifically a technical profile that describes the interaction with the REST API. I have the address of the API. I get this directly off of Azure Functions. And then I am going to declare what's the exchange I want to have with this API. B2C will connect to this API, will send a player tag, the player tag string itself, and just wait for a reply. As you could see, the reply was negative. Do not, if it's already taken, it'll tell it to the user. So by adding two things, again, I added a validation step right here validation step right here, Azure Functions, number one. And number two, I uh, then uh, added the definition of the API. I was able to perform that validation. By the way, all of this, uh, this existing policies, existing uh, declarations for user journeys already exist, and they're usually available to you uh, in the getting started. I'm just going to show you that very quickly. Getting started with custom policies in Azure Active Directory B2C tells you how to get that going, and specifically where to get the, the existing policies from GitHub. Great. So let's go back to the presentation for a second. Now that we've shown you how to execute it, um, we've shown you how to do it in Azure Functions, let's go back over here and continue this portion. So we saw the validation step. We took a look at the API itself. And I want to point you to a few places to get this started. Uh, in particular, take a look at the training and solution guides that we have available, some pretty uh, extensive uh, labs and white papers there. And also take a look at the code we provided and the demo that I provided to you today. We can't wait to see you in the family. Lastly, for developers, a couple of quick notes. Uh, we've been working on uh, releasing programmatic access, and it's now publicly available, uh, to upload download policies, to create applications and register them, and also to create tenants. We can't wait to see you there. And on the right, just a little reference of, of now some integrations we have in Visual Studio, and we're doing integrations with a number of partners to speed up deployments. Reach out to us, and we look forward to having you around. And with that, thank you. I have a great Microsoft Build 2019.